At the end of May, Zoetermeer and some other cities in the Netherlands will be hosting the concerts of a very interesting musician. Someone who's played with big bands and for huge audiences around the world, whilst at the same time maintaining his passion for the blues, playing for small crowds with his own band. Stay tuned to find out who this man is. I'm Paul Brown, this is West International. With fluctuating exchange rates, a fragile economy, and companies less willing to keep international staff on their payroll, the landscape for expats is changing dramatically. In our service item this week, we join a lecture on an expat in crisis. Now, as this week is a Eurovision Song Contest, we ask our expats in the Vox Box this week about their knowledge and opinions of this event. Of course, we have Cecilia with her surprise item, but first, this week, Nicola changes her approach to cooking. She's heading to a bookstore in The Hague, but I have a feeling she's not actually looking for any recipes there. I'm normally in the kitchen with one or two people, but today I'm cooking with a bunch of about 10 kids from all different nationalities and who all live in the vicinity of The Hague. Now, they're all used to very specific cooking from their part of the world, so it was really difficult to decide what we're going to cook with them today. So we decided that we're going to introduce them to a Dutch speciality that all children all over the world are bound to love. Caroline, what's on the menu today? Poffertjes. Only poffertjes, nothing else? Yeah, just poffertjes because it's considered in Holland as a meal. It's like pancakes. Okay, well, I think we should get our little cooks, get into the kitchen and get started. We'll get started. Let's go. I feel like I'm back at kindergarten. Damn, I was hoping I wouldn't have to wear it. That was my excuse. Well, we thought of everything. So, so we just give you a little bit of egg with your flour, with the milk, and then you can mix it yourself. And then we're going to start making the puffertjes. So do you do this every week, Marilyn? Yeah, birthday parties, uh, normally about once a week. And every Wednesday we have a cooking workshop. They can all just join us uh, what kind children. of children what kind of things do you cook uh, we we did apple pie muffins pizza so what's your name eat it and have you ever cooked puffages before uh, no nope. how many languages do you speak uh, at least eight you, you speak eight languages? Yeah. Wow, I'm very impressed with you, Edith. I hope that your puffages are as good as your languages. Thank you. <laughs> I heard the electricity isn't working. Yes, this right. side is not working, but that side is working, so maybe we have to switch. Where do you come from, Victor? From Leather Netherlands. Are you Dutch, are you? Why is your English so good? Um, I don't know. It's you don't know? Okay, kids. Come on, we'll go to the kitchen because the electricity is not working anymore, so we cannot cook it here. We'll have to find another spot. And luckily we have another kitchen where we can do it, okay? Matilda, you've lived in, in Norway, you've lived in Holland twice, you've lived in the States. Is it difficult moving from all, from one country to another? It usually yes, is. It is. <laughs> yeah, because you have to say goodbye to all your friends. But you can make new friends pretty quickly. So How do you stay in contact with your old friends? Uh, we email a lot and then we can talk on the phone. And they sometimes send letters. I am very impressed with your puffages. What have you put on them? How have you decorated um, them? So first I put sugar on them. Uh -huh. And then I got a little chocolate to sprinkle over them. And then I got some puffed rice. Mm. Do you know what these little bits of chocolate are called? Hagelslag. Ah, that's, that's a very nice Dutch thing, isn't it? Yeah. 
Well, we had no electricity, we dropped the mixture on the floor, we've eaten loads of poppages, we're all really dirty, but we had a fantastic time, didn't we? Yes! yes. And if you would like to make expert poppages like this, go to our website, www.westinternational.nl, and see you next week. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye. I do know it, but I haven't watched it in a long period of time. In Australia, we find it pure entertainment. Um, I think a lot of people in Europe do as well. It's a pretty good competition. Uh, great way to feel for your country and support. I hope that this year it will be different than other years, that the voting will be uh, proper and that it won't be politicized. So the groups of uh, countries vote for each other. And I always enjoy the countries that don't take themselves too seriously. I don't know it. I think it was very political during the Cold War. I think it has lost its relevance a little bit after it. And I think fewer and fewer people are watching it. I think it's a great idea because I think it brings a lot of the countries together. And I think it's the opportunity in a, in a friendly way to compete with each other. And I think that's what in the end people like. Due to the economic crisis, many companies and institutions start revising their policies towards the internationals they employ and start changing employment conditions or even discontinuing the contracts. The consequences for an expat being unemployed due to the financial crisis are huge. In some cases, they may have to return to their home country, moving all of their possessions, taking the children out of school and relocating the whole family. This problem was one of the main topics of the lecture on expat in crisis, organized by the University of Leiden in The Hague. Professors, lawyers and expats from many different organizations came together to discuss what the impact of the crisis is for expats. It affects them greatly and I think especially for expats um, in this time, it's um, a horrible time because what we were discussing this evening, people are brought here with their families expecting to be here for a long time and sometimes after a very short time they have to go back with everything. In many instances, an expat in the Netherlands is connected to his employment. If the employment is going to be terminated, the expat is given three months to look for another job. If he can't find alternative employment during this period, he has to leave the country. The IND says if you are not able to find a new job within those three months, at that stage, clearly you're not highly skilled enough, so not, you're not really a knowledge migrant anymore. We were just discussing, um, it's not only an expat crisis, but it's a crisis, of course, in whole Holland. And that means that the employer is going to try to either change your contract or dismiss you in the worst case. Um, if we're talking about a unilateral change of your contract, I would certainly advise you to go to a lawyer um, because employers think that they can change your contract just like that, but that's not possible. Employers have to have a significant reason to change or end a contract. This reason cannot simply be cost reduction. The employer really has to prove that they are in a crisis. Only once they can prove this is it then possible to change the contract, and even then it has to be a reasonable request. If your salary has to be diminished, then they have to give you a transition phase. And in the worst case scenario, an employer may want a dismissal, in which case the best thing to do is to find out if you have the right to a redundancy package. But it certainly pays to not just accept any proposal from um, an employer, but to make sure that the proposal is reasonable and that you certainly get a redundancy package. A lot of employers, they act as if they have to deal with normal Dutch local employees and uh, an dismissal or redundancy situation for expats is uh, much more and it's, 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 it's a lot more consequences for the expat than for local employees and there is the problem for the expat. And for those who are unfortunate to be in this difficult situation, a few tips from the experts. Um, don't sign anything at all. That's, I think, the first lesson I always give everyone. Um, if you receive a proposal, um, make sure that you're well informed. Now, experts should not simply say, OK, I understand your employer that you need to fire me and therefore I agree on a termination proposal. You should really check with a lawyer or with uh, an expert centre whether this is indeed fit for your situation. Um, the, the tip is, Everything which is good for the Dutch local employee is not especially good for you as an expat. Do you want me to sing? They're putting you on the spot here. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not off the top of my head. Uh, from this here. Uh, 
Not really. I remember there was a Greek song that won one year. Uh, I don't remember the words, but one goes like, na 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 na, something like that. Ding a dong, I think it's called. See it. No, I think obviously ABBA, but that tells you how long ago it is that I watched it. I know the Italian song, so Unite, Unite, you go. I think I've, I've heard that, and Johnny Logan, the Irish uh, guy. Well, I can't sing them, but I know the Irish songs have been very strong, and the Israelis, those I remember, all done from Cyprus. Now, it's been said many times that the economy is at record lows, and this has a direct effect on buying and selling an apartment. Now these problems are all very familiar to Eva from Slovakia, who's been in the Netherlands for 12 years with her husband and two children. They're looking to sell their apartment at the moment, but we'll leave that to the professionals. Let's go over and see if Cecilia can help them sell some of their personal items. Nice to meet you. Nice Please to come in. Thank you. I'm guessing this is what you're going to be selling off today. Yes, indeed. But first, let's find out more about you, Eva. Okay. I hear that you're leaving the Netherlands. Where are you going? Yes, uh, I've been living here for 12 years. And after this day, we are leaving back to my home country, Slovakia in Bratislava. Oh, okay. So 12 years, you've been here a long time. Do you speak Indeed. Dutch now? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I cannot speak Dutch. It was pity. I didn't start uh, to study Dutch because uh, after all, I would say that I uh, never felt, you know, uh, being or living with Dutch society mm. as, a, as a Dutch person. And so you'll be selling this off, what is this? Azerbaijan wine. It's a very, very nice and lovely piece and uh, we can open it even. Ooh, very unique. The asking price is uh, 45 euros. That's an awesome deal. So what do you want to take with you to remind you of your good Please statement. let me show you. Well, uh, this is the book uh, I would like to take with myself. Uh, it's a photo book actually with so many pictures. Oh. Fantastic photo book. It has so many uh, you know, pictures. Yeah. Uh, the nature is gorgeous. And of course, uh, for us, uh, the most uh, important and very very specific is the sea and uh, ah, seaside as a such because my country we don't have a sea so. and so what did you not like very much and definitely don't want to take with you oh yes i've got one things i can show you <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna smash today this is my f shoes full oh. of pain not so smash. i would like to destroy them so what is the story behind these shoes when i came in and of course I wanted to be, or I wanted to do something with my free, uh, free time. So I decided to go to the gym, but I was a bit disappointed because the people mm -hmm. uh, doing exercises there were a bit making laugh from me. Making or fun of you. Making mm. fun or, you know, I was just trying to understand why it's so, why I'm so different or, you know, it was very bitter feeling for me. Oh, so that's, that's why I would say, well, yeah. this is over and you want to chuck them? Let's do so. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> How good are you, the basket? Oh, very good. Oh, <laughs> score. Thank you so much, Ava. Oh, it was so, so much fun. Yeah, thank you for helping me and bye. <laughs> bye. bye. Good luck with thank that. everything to move to Czechoslovakia. Bye. Bye. So if you are leaving, let us know at www.westinternational.nl and maybe you can throw some rubbish away. Uh, I don't know, actually. Did they ever win? Maybe once? That's my guess. Twice? Three times? I'm guessing once. Um, not enough. Three times? Maybe? Maybe we should try harder. I, I don't know. I hope it did win many times and I hope the only thing that I always remember it was deep point was the highest scores. I hope Poland scored many times deep point in the in the context. I haven't heard the song so I really have no idea. Is it, is it a good song? Have you heard it? If you get all the eastern countries together, all the Balkan countries, etc., I think we've got no chance. Let's hope for a top 10 position. Yeah, go Holland. My
Snowy White is an English guitarist known for having played with the famous bands Thin Lizzy and Pink Floyd and more recently for the Roger Waters band. As a solo artist, he's most well known for his 1983 hit Bird of Paradise, which reached the top 10 in the UK singles hit chart. Although playing in different bands and styles, his main passion has always been the blues. Right, first of all, I, I think it's, it's nice to go back through how, you've, uh, how your career has been because it, it's, uh, you know, I've read quite a bit about you. And uh, if, you go, if we go back to the early part of your career, which artists would you say that inspired you then to get involved in, in music the way that you have? Like a lot of guitar players, um, it was Eric Clapton. Right. Funnily enough, in, uh, back in the, I think it was like 1966. Right. Before you were born, I'm sure. Just slightly, yeah. About, yeah. <laughs> Um, I heard him on the radio with John Mayer's Blues Breakers. I think it must have been their first recording or something. Right. And I was playing around with this new th bit of equipment that my father had bought, which was called a tape recorder. Right. And I happened to have it on and recorded this session that they'd done on the radio. Right. And so I could actually, with this magical machine, I could play it over and over again. Yeah. And there was Eric playing these bluesy things. And I just thought, that's what I, that's what I want to do. to get an easy ride And I can't see nothing good for miles, miles But I ain't got a plan to make myself a better man But I may be confused cause, uh, I'm no stranger to the blues There's something I read that you did in, in the, uh, I think it was the early 90s when <clears throat> Roger invited you to, uh, to uh, work with him on the, the Wall Show uh, in Berlin in front of 350,000 people. Uh, estimates vary. I've heard 350, I've heard half a million, I've heard 280, I've heard 400. That's a but huge it's a big amount crowd. I didn't really have time to look around and think, wow, this is big. Oh, yeah. Look at all those people. Yeah. You know, because I did the solo on top of the wall. And, um, and you, go up, you go up on top of the wall, the spotlight hits you, and you play the first note. Until you play the first note, you don't even know whether it works. Yeah, 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 of you course, know? yeah, yeah. And it's like, you haven't got time to go, oh, look at all those people. You're going, oh, my God, I hope <laughs> this works. So, you know. What's interesting about your career is that you've had the two sides to it, the, the working with the larger bands like uh, Pink Floyd, Thin Lizzy, but also the solo career, which I know is important to you, and you write your own lyrics. Uh, what are the differences between the two sides of how you go about your career? If I'm working with somebody like Roger, for instance, um, I mean, it's great. It really is. I have a lovely time. Roger treats the band really well. But I am a bit of a sheep. I just follow. Right. Because the music is what it is. I play what I have to play. I'm told to be at the airport at a certain time. Excellent. With my band, it's not like that I like that your life. All. It sounds <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's great. But with my band, it's not like that at all. OK. With my band, I have to organise stuff and drive and I do, you know, I do a lot of things. Right. Uh, but the big plus is I'm playing my music. Yeah. And for those couple of hours on stage, it's all worthwhile. So, OK, so we're here in the Netherlands, and um, what, what's your connection to, to, to Holland? Some time ago, I think it was about 92, I came over to do a gig it was a Jimi Hendrix tribute festival, and, and uh, the promoter of it put me together with this uh, rhythm section, mm. and I thought, oh, Dutch rhythm section, I wonder what that'll be like. And they were great, they're Dutch Indonesian guys, so they became my band, so the three of us plus uh, Max Middleton on keyboards. You know, with your band members being from Holland, has it, has it introduced you to other artists in Holland. I'm not used to working with other guitarists and, uh, and people who are doing the singing. Right. It's a bit of a, it's a different thing for me now. Yeah. Uh, because normally I'm totally <coughs> in control of everything. Mm. But now I've had to sit back a bit and let the guys do their own thing. Right. Try and steer it a little bit maybe. Is that hard for you? The only difficult thing was finding the balance of keeping quiet. And, and voicing and, your, your opinion. Voicing my opinion without trying to you know, make it as if I was trying to steer everything my way. Okay. Because that wouldn't, what's the point of getting these guys in if you don't let them do their own thing? Well, this is it. I'm very happy with the result, I must say. And uh, we haven't played live yet, so it'll be interesting for me. So, on the 23rd of May, the friendliest and most modest musician I've ever met will perform in the Budorai in Zutomir. The Snowy White well, Blues play. Project will perform their new CD, In Our Time of Living. He's scheduled several concerts from all over the country in that same week, so there's plenty of chance to see him perform. I'm going to show you an E minor chord, okay. which is that. 
Two fingers there. Just right. two fingers there, yeah. Okay. So the second and third string with those two fingers. That's it. Right. Yeah, you've got it already. Yeah, Come on then, have okay. a go. Okay. Hey! Hey! <laughs> so it's my new career. I can be. A this is it. Just the one chord. Can you guitar give me a guitar teacher that now. only needs one chord. Yeah. Then well, we're in business. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Snowy. <laughs> my E minor chord. I shall tour the world with this one chord, I think. Now, I'm sure we've all heard of the Eurovision Song Contest, a competition in which every European country can showcase their musical talent. Countries can then vote for the group that they like the most, an international event that everyone can participate in and enjoy. The Gypsy Jazz Formation Basili is reviving Gypsy swing music with their unique stage presence and driven, charismatic personality. They've garnered a great reputation nationally and internationally, playing at events such as the North Sea Jazz Festival and even Birdland in New York. The idea behind Pearls of Besidenhout is that people who have a special hobby, talent or passion get the opportunity to strut their stuff in the comfort of their own living rooms. Others can follow the route on foot or by bike and enjoy an entertaining spring afternoon. Todd Hassak Lowy is an American-born writer and teacher of Hebrew at the University of Florida. His debut novel, Captives, is a combination of satire, spiritual discovery and politics. He'll be interviewed by Hans Bauman about his book and his life. For more information about these and other events, visit our website, www.westinternational.nl. Well, it was a real honor to meet with and spend some time with Snowy and learn a little bit of guitar from the maestro himself. Next week, we'll be staying on the subject of music. Jazz is traditionally important for the city of The Hague and we'll be looking forward to a festival that takes place on the 22nd and 23rd of May. That's it for this week. Now, don't forget this episode is repeated all week and next Monday, we're back with a brand new episode. So, I hope to see you next week on West International. You are what you watch.